Welcome back to Fox Netball as round 12 of Suncorp Super Netball continues. The first of two First Nation rounds to be held this season. We acknowledge the Wongal people of the Eora Nation, the Baramadigal people of the Darug Nation as the traditional owners of the lands around Sydney Olympic Park. The feature since 2018 formerly Indigenous round, we're focusing on raising awareness, celebrating and understanding the contributions of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples to netball and to the nation. Fabulous atmosphere at Ken Rosewall Arena, some amazing activations outside, plenty of pre-match spectacles as the two teams stand sideline and we prepare for the Welcome to Country by Glenn Doyle. Today's Welcome to Country, Glenn Doyle. Good afternoon, netball fans. How are we? Um, Yama Gine, which is hello and welcome. I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, welcome you to the land of the Darak Nation and also to pay my respects to the elders, past and present and emerging. We're gathered here on the land of the Darak for this very special occasion to celebrate Reconciliation Week. And it's with great honour that I'm here to represent. I'd also like to take this time to acknowledge the other 28 clans that reside in the Sydney metropolitan area, from the Hawkesbury River to the north, George's River to the south, and the Peens River to the west. Within those boundaries reside the 29 clans of the Eora Nation. And it's with great pleasure and honour that I'm here to acknowledge those people here today and to also acknowledge the elders that might be here also. And I would like to wish the team, both teams playing today, a very good luck and a very good game. Thank you very much. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. We're all set for what promises to be a massive arm wrestle between two teams determined to make the playoffs. For the Giants, yet another finals appearance is on their wish list. For the Adelaide Thunderbirds, well, they've never made the finals in the history of Suncorp Super Netball. Will we see history made today? Giants off the back of a rough road trip, Perth by Launceston. So Ken Rosewell Arena, a welcome sight, outclassed by the fever last week, acutely aware of how tight the contest is for a place in the finals. The Thunderbirds, well, are they running in form at the right time? Giants taking the court. I'm Annie Sargent. Joining me in commentary, Maddie Brown, and on the sidelines, Sam Pullman. Pretty complete team, I'd say. Got each area covered. We hope we can do this justice. Beautiful shots there of the imagery on both teams' uniforms. Of course, we're showcasing the Giants. It's their home game. And next week, round 13, we'll dive a little deeper into the story behind the Thunderbirds' uniforms. Sophie Dwyer, Tilda Garrett. Their face is showing just how much is at stake in this match as the ball is delivered to Jamie Lee Price. She steps in and the host will get us underway with the first centre pass. Great movement from the back from the Giants as they patiently try and connect with the front line into the hands of the skipper Joe Harton. Double shuffle with Maddie Hay. Williams just a little slow to her feet. Joe Harton lines it up, and the Giants are the first to score. And Maddie Brown, this has got something in it. You can feel it already. Absolutely. You hear the crowd getting in and amongst it already. Really good intensity from the very first whistle from the Adelaide Thunderbirds, and you see it emulating down to the Giants' defence here as well. It's all about building that pressure early on and putting your opponents under the pump. Thunderbirds missing three key personnel last round have them back but some strong decisions made by Tammy Offseeds the midcourt rejig Nankerville starts at wing attack but Taylor Williams holds the spot at center Tipper Dwan teaming up with Lucy Austin they were so good last week I'll be looking to continue that form and roll it into the semi-finals Price strong that's our matchup through the midcourt 
Oh, good pressure from the Adelaide Thunderbirds from Tilly Garrett and outside by Latanya Wilson, putting some hesitation into the skipper's thoughts. They were super strong as a defensive unit last week, so Giants need to be patient with the ball. Oh, as it bobbles around the hands of the Thunderbirds defence. Sterling and Wilson in the team of the week. Sterling, of course, acting captain last week in the absence of Petty and Nankerville. Looked like she enjoyed that role. Yeah, one from one, 100%. Just keep it like that, Annie. That's all you need to do as a captain. Close the books undone. Oh, quick ball. Nice connection. Tip of Dwan to Lucy Austin. She was good last week. 49 goals she contributed. Chance to go back to back. Thunderbirds. They've started well. Good pressure, though, from Maddie Hay, giving away precious centimetres, but up for the challenge. And the crowd love it here at Ken Rosal Arena. Beautiful drive, cross court swings the balance of the Adelaide Thunderbirds defence into the pocket to Price. Adelaide putting on that real strong one-on-one -on -one defence, trying to be accountable of your, for your own player first. I think a lot of teams start a game in one-on-one, -on -one, but then we'll see some more defensive structures of a zone or a box start to come into play. Good start from Sophie Dry. Let's stay at courtside to Sam Pullman. Bit of an arm wrestle early. We'd hope for this. We sure did. This is exactly the start that we wanted, where both teams are having to work and earn everything. I've been watching closely this Giants attack line. Now, we spoke heavily in pregame about how good this defensive end is from Thunderbirds, and I feel like Giants at the moment are just giving them too much uh, you know, credit. They're holding on to the ball just a second. Their key is when they let the ball go and have movement. So let's see if they can do that in the next couple of minutes. They are paying respect to the Thunderbirds lineup, but that hot hand of Sophie Dwyer has been brought to round 12. The two giant shooters, both left-handed shooters. Shot at remarkable accuracy last week, 96%. So making the most of their opportunities, the home side. Hart and quick hands to Price. Dwyer working hard to shift these defenders. And the timing just out from Sterling takes a piece of leather. But takes a rebound. Uh, too much on it. Throwing goes to the Giants. She sits at the top of that stat for those defensive rebounds. So it's unlike her to not pull those ones in. Miscommunication. Maddie Hay to Sophie Dwyer. Hesitation again. Again, a mark of respect to this Adelaide Thunderbirds defence unit. And a little late to the party is Matilda Garrett. She, of course, is our Telstra player to watch. We'll keep an eye on her performance. Giants out by two. From the back door, they go by Parmenta. A direct approach to Hay. You really see the goal shooters for the Giants dominate that middle channel. At times, I'd love to see them sweep to a sideline just to give the top space to wing attack and centre. Well, Harden very much the general in controlling the space, but Sophie Dwyer's brought a hot hand. She's been good. Dwan held up for getting across the transverse line. They back play. Wilson in good support. Nankerville floats over. Having trouble penetrating congested across the line there's the space at the back but too much on it great pressure from the Giants defense they held them up tried to force that long ball and that's where the confusion came obviously in the pass quickly taken Well, Matilda Garrett out hunting. Had a good look at that one, so expect some ball out early. Price, she's strong around that circle edge. Very deliberate in how she's playing. She is. She's setting the tone for her, her attack end, but she's such a great link from defence to attack. She's so dominant, hard to come up against. 
Well, Thunderbirds think that too. There has been an HCF timeout called by the Thunderbirds. We'll get down to eavesdrop into the huddles. A good start, though, from the home side. They lead 6-2. HCF tactical timeout taken by the Thunderbirds and Maddie Brown. Tanya Ops wasting no time. Sight, see, deliver. Her messaging was to Taylor Williams, and of course, you identified that as one of the matchups of this Williams on Jamie Lee Price. And she said, you know, you've, you've got to respect Jamie, but you've also got to be able to respect your uh, teammates as well. Sight, Lucy Austin, she was saying, and deliver that pass back yourself in. Go back to what was working last week. As we said, don't give too much credit to your opponent. Try and expose them a little bit as well. Sammy Pullman said on the sidelines she thought the Giants were paying too much respect to the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Perhaps Taylor Williams paying too much respect to an Australian Diamond. And you know what? It is a hard lineup coming up against an experienced player in Jamie Lee Price. Taylor Williams has definitely got the game. She just might take a couple of moments to just feel that confidence and build herself into this match. Sam Pullman running the sideline. And Sam, we talked in the opener for the match that the Giants were not at their best defensively last week. How do you rate the start? You're right. Last week was their lowest gains from this for the season. And Fever, it was just way too easy in terms of their tra transition. This is a much better start from them defensively. They're making the attack from the Adelaide Thunderbirds work for every move. If they can continue this pressure, they'll certainly come up with the intercepts and the gains. As we see, Amy Pontmenta do just that. There you go, Annie. You ask for it and doesn't she deliver? I love it when we ask and they deliver. And on cue, well done, Sammy Pullman. We'll put that one down to you. Can the baby-faced assassin finish for the Giants? Sophie Dwyer does just that. Look at the work from Amy Pontmenta. She's come to play. She has. She's setting, setting that defensive pressure as you said oh, that one-on-one -on -one, really dominating i love to see in a, a defense defender dominate early and then they can start to fly and have a little bit more of a crack and some, some balls certainly applying the pressure on macy nankable how will she reply would drive the circle over the top they go of tilly mcdonald you see austin just the one from one So more than halfway through this first quarter and not far out from the power five. Amy Palmenta, what's her name? Written into the record books round 12. Getting lots of tips on ball early. Building that confidence. And enter the crowd. They're loving the start from Giants netball. We see the pressure, the double teaming on Nankerville applied there from Palmenta and Jamie Lee Price. And the crowd right behind this start. Giants nine lead, Thunderbirds three. Minute 20 out from the power five. And that's a threatening sign, Maddie Brown, for the visitors because the Giants can double up a double threat in goals, both on the leaderboard for super shots. And Sophie Dwyer has her radar turned well and truly on. I haven't actually seen her do too much shooting towards the post just yet. A lot of them have been at range and at distance. So, as you said, it is alarming signs of what could come for the Giants. Sam Pullman, you're on the sideline. Is it too early to panic in the Thunderbirds camp? No, it isn't. But I think it shows the experience of the Giants in terms of they have been in finals before, so they know crucial moments in a game. But we've just seen a change in the wing attack position. Fail McDonald to come on and wing attack. We highlighted just before how well the Giants' defence ends are doing. So I think she'd just bring that little bit more speed, change of direction to try and lose Parmenta. 
Thanks, Sam. Well, Maddie, we talked about this start of the match. Nankerville and Petty both back in contention, missing last week. How would they start the midcourt? Taylor Williams seemed to deserve it. That wing attack was a question mark. And, and, and Georgie Hoard is out of the mix. She's such a playmaker for their attack end, so they are losing a lot. But they do have the personnel to pick up that slack. And as was mentioned, Elle McDonald, she's dynamic, looks long straight away. They've got that strong target in Austin. They need to start using it and exploiting the Giants' defence. Exactly what was asked for by Tanya Ops. Beautiful ball, delivered early, space behind Lucy Austin. Thunderbirds hit five. jumping on that early looking after players safety Kate Wright and Tara Warner officiating for this match the breathing space you see that penalty count for the Adelaide Thunderbirds and they need to be a little bit more disciplined to start to build a bit more pressure against the Giants otherwise they're not going to get any ball and this scoreline is just going to continue to push out resetting the penalty Maddie Hay in possession over the top to Dwyer They'll take the one. McDonald over the line. And they're looking for Austin, but it was well read by Tilly McDonald, and the crowd responds. Over the top of the mess, Dwyer pops across the transverse line. Smart play, but through the hands of the skipper, here's a chance for the Thunderbirds. And it's flooded across the transverse line, a sea of orange. Adelaide Thunderbirds held to their defensive third. Almost free reign from transverse line to circle. Maddie Brown, little contest. There he is, and this is the danger zone. As we see a super shot. Five goals in in obviously 13 to 12 minutes of the game. It's not super netball quality netball there for the Thunderbirds. Well, she's number one on the leaderboard for super shots, Joe Hutton. That one won't be down as one for her. They're looking comfortable though, the hosts. This is a clutch moment for the Thunderbirds. They need to knuckle down, go back to their basic structures, take time in passing to options but do the work early so that when you're passing to a teammate it's not contested. Maddie just talk to me about the body language on Shamira Sterling very slow to pick up the loose ball slow to take the throw in does not look her usual self. No she when she gets hand on the ball early she builds throughout the game but she's struggling to get have that impact already so she looks a little bit deflated. What a difference a week makes for the backspace behind Austin are the Thunderbirds. And they take it to six, the visitors. Center pass to follow. Through the back door, Tilly Garrett. Crowd are hungry to keep Thunderbirds scoreless in the last couple of minutes of this first quarter. Dwan from super shot range. Looking for the one. Austin obliges. Tanya Wilson drawing penalties. With attention from the umpires. Over the top to Dwyer. She's been a target for the Giants early. And she's happy to finish. Great long feed there on that Harvey Norman replay. Hey, siding Dwyer and letting it go with confidence. In contrast, the timing just out in the Thunderbird circle. Austin a little early on the move. Forces another reset of the pass. Josh and Paul sees April Brandley step out. They're conscious of Dwan in super shot range. They can't convert though. It's not humming along as it did last week for the Adelaide Thunderbirds. They'll obviously see this Thunderbird line up right through to the quarter time break, but big names on the bench. You'd expect those changes at quarter time. 
And the Ops leading the starting line, with the exception of the change at wing attack, absorb the pressure from the Giants. Sterling, Hedges. Touch from Matilda Gallant, but she draws a whistle. It's her sixth penalty. Oh, what a sweet shot. That was a beautiful shot from Sophie Dwyer. A super shot. And just remember, for every successful Suncorp super shot, Suncorp will donate $100 to the Comfort Girls Foundation to help keep girls in the game. Of course, they recently launched community response grants to help clubs, associations and the members impacted by the devastating floods. More money in the bank from Suncorp. The Giants are here to play. What an outstanding amount of goals that they've been able to put and scoreboard pressure they've put on. Thunderbirds just don't have the answers. They need to start draining in those Suncorp Super Netball shots, but they're not confident enough to do it. Tipper Dwan is the answer in that department. But beaten by the buzzer, it's a lackluster, hesitant performance from the visitors. And the Giants netball, the home side, relishing being home after a long and tough road trip, go to the quarter time break, leading the Thunderbirds 18 7. Tanya Ops, coach for the Adelaide Thunderbirds, not mincing words with her players, but very direct. And Maddie Brown, you called for some changes. And they not haven't, one. I mean, no. I guess, you know, looking at that scoreboard, I'm like, if not now, when is it going to come? Do you do you continue to sit Petty and Podgita on the bench? Well, they're in chase position, the Origin Energy quarter time score, 18-7, the Thunderbirds have come to play but are slow to ignite. They are, and it makes you question maybe those people on the bench aren't quite phys physically fit, um, can't run out. I'd love to see Dwan step up in this quarter. She needs to be a bit more of a playmate and create that play down in that attack end. Well, they need to get ball into circle. Just eight attempts in the first quarter. Sam Pullman, any vibes from the sideline? All positive vibes down here with Giants Nepal. And why wouldn't they be? Keeping the Thunderbirds to seven goals defensively is a mu in attack, sorry, is a much better defensive effort compared to what we saw last week. It was all just little things. They were really happy. In attack, it was have a look, see if you can fake them and open up that middle. So really positive from Giants. And I'd expect that they want to stand up and, and deliver to a whole nother level now. Sam, while we've got you, we were full of praise for the Thunderbirds defensive effort last week. They just don't see themselves as lackluster and disconnected. They are, you're right, disconnected. You've got to do the work. It's not just going to happen for you. The intercepts aren't just going to come. You've got to keep adjusting, keep doing the one-on-one -on -one work. And I feel like in the first couple of minutes, that first quarter, they were doing that. I said that Giants were hesitant. Now, Giants are just doing whatever they like. So Thunderbirds really need to step up here one-on-one -on -one and dictate. Don't just chase and let Giants attackers do whatever they like, just like Maddie Hage is there. Well, they haven't been able to apply pressure. And that last passage coming down court way too fast for the Giants. They're relishing this outing round 12 as the skipper warms up the left hand, shoots through Sterling. It'll be brought back as a contact on the arm. And quickly, the Giants out to 21. This is a danger time for the Thunderbirds. Drive comes from McDonald cross court, but hesitancy, Maddie Brown, in the release. They are struggling to penetrate over that transverse line, always looking laterally rather than long. And then they're forced to elevate that pass, and it's just got a bit too much on it from Williams to Austin there. As we do see a change coming on the sideline here, Petty coming on to wing defence and Wilson going to the bench. I would expect her to put that goal defence on to try and get that connection of those Jamaicans in that defensive circle. And as you say it from your lips to their switching of patches, Wilson now in position, ready to come on at goal defence. The floodgates have opened. They need to do something, the Adelaide Thunderbirds. That's a great jump from Sterling. And a very clear indication from the umpire, touching the hand on the way down on the landing. All good to that point, so that's just a matter of timing. Yeah, and it is about just making those little adjustments and then having another crack 
and maybe on the next shot or a couple of shots after. Tony Ops talked about timing and hesitancy and being direct to post. She said nobody can beat Lucy Austin on a well-placed ball. They've just been few and far between. Hesitation then from Tipper Dwan on the shot. But much better ball play to give and go and work herself into that circle. If they double defend on Austin, you've got to do that work out the front. 4-1 start to the quarter. Giants with the ascendancy. Better ball, still not perfectly placed. And no deception on it. No, and it would be, it would be great to see some balls trying to get the defenders off and getting her a little bit closer to the post rather than drawing her all the way out. As we look at those miss and net points, Dwyer sitting on 43. Sterling hasn't had a lot of impact, but still at the top there. But it's that mid-court for the Giants that are dominating and directing the flow of this game right now. Amy Parmenta, not just a defensive role, very much an attacking arm to this Giants thrust through the midcourt. Price, we talked about the matchup between her and Talia Williams, dominating at the moment. Yeah, Price has got the edge on that one. She's asserting her diamonds dominance. Just opening the space there for them to reset the approach of the circle. Down goes Sterling, checks the decal, checks to see if the decal tripped her. Doesn't like it. Very despondent Shamira Sterling. Not the same player we watched last week. No, and, and as I said, she's a confident player. So when she can get her hands on that ball early, she continues to fly from there. She's got to just focus as we look at this Harvey Norman replay. A little bit of a slip there. Yeah, both legs absolutely out from under her on the decal. Looks to see who was there to cause it, <laughs> but there was no one. It was a Suncock super shot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> McDonald, quick ball in early to Austin. A better approach from the Thunderbirds. She completes for them. That will help. They're back in the business of contesting now in this second quarter. Running the race in close contention. But they've got a mile of work to do to catch up that first quarter. I think a real barometer for the Adelaide Thunderbirds is their defensive. So when they are getting those intercepts and game ball, it continues to transition into their attack. At the moment, they're struggling. They're out of play a lot. Giants are just running with momentum and directing every type of play in this, in this game so far. Well, the intent was good, but the timing well out from Sterling on that approach. And week after week, we sing the praises of this Thunderbirds defense unit. We talk about the inability to turn that and convert into goal. Hesitation. Williams, quick ball, front hold is good from Austin. So just changing up the space she's providing to the feeders. And there was that deception on the park. She balked low and got to deliver that high pass into Austin. That's better work from Sterling. Front position, couldn't quite get a clean handle. Contact call goes against Jamie Lee Price. Not thrilled with that one. Hannah Petty, what impact has she had? She's been obviously quiet. I mean, you know, to see that oh, as a pass goes flying. Called a coach killer. Yes, it is. <laughs> called a coach killer. I guess, you know, but she's getting around her teammate. She's been able to see it from the sidelines. It might just take her a little bit of time to get into play. Remember, she's had a week off. But she can get her hands to ball, and she needs to lead from the front and show Black through her actions right now. Harton out long and deep. Wyatt takes the circle option, finishes. And that will be another timeout, an HCF timeout, this time called by Giants Netball as Julie Fitzgerald wants to steady the ship. And I want you two to get too wide from each other because I want these two to be able to separate them so we don't end up with those two working together. So you control the middle and these two can afford to separate, all right?
They have hustle from the home side as they leave their HCF timeout huddle. Julie Fitzgerald, Maddie, just wanting to refresh a few points. She did, and she spoke to Maddie Hay and said, I want you to control that centre channel. And the goal is to kind of separate the defenders and work those wide movements. Great so, intercept there by Jamie Lee Price. Yeah, she's come to play round 12. Julie Fitzgerald reminding the Giants they're leading the quarter 7-4, so it's not a dominant display in the second quarter, but the Thunderbirds with it all ahead of them. Heart and ball on a string. There's a deception we thought was lacking at the other end of the court. And the patience to play it around and the timing to finish it. Sam Pullman, what could you hear when you're eavesdropping into the Thunderbirds huddle? Is there impatience? Is there frustration? I wouldn't say frustration out of probably <laughs> our end, but Tanya was spent a lot of time with the attack end talking about the different angles and the multiple options, spending a lot of time with Elle and uh, Taylor Williams to say we need different leads. Like one needs to punch, then another one goes. We speak about Lucy Austin and how easy, just like that, they can get the ball to her. But for me, it's the, the work that needs to be done out the front. Like look at Tipper, have a watch on her and Brandley. Brandley's such a strong one-on-one -on -one player. I think Tipper really needs to get in there and, and provide options as well. If they go that way, they'll find Austin like they did last week. Thank you, Sam. And Maddie, we look at the shooting options for the Thunderbirds. The option is again a post shooter in Pot Gita. And I'm so shocked that we haven't seen her on, on court. She's so dominant, brings a lot of their scoring power. It makes me think, is she not quite right to play a full game? Are they still waiting to manage? But with such a do or die game for this team, you need fit players out there to be to be to put on to do the job. Well, halfway through the second quarter, just two goals the difference for the quarter score, but the margin considerable. How do you play that mentally? I guess just chipping away. It is about going back to those basics, as Sam Sam mentioned. Oh, Tilly McDonald in front position. Not enough on that pass there. But it's all about connections. You've got to go to someone else on court to get that connection and then slowly chip away at it. Don't look at it, the overall result. <laughs> nice try, Taylor Williams. You're not going to get away with that down, <laughs> Kate Wright. And... Easy progress down court for the Giants. And that pressure Sam Pullman was talking about, non-existent through the centre third defensively. Far too easy for the Giants. There's the ball. Great positioning from Tilly McDonald as we look at the Harvey Norman replay. But to be fair, the ball needed some more. Absolutely. The hold needed to probably just hold that split second until the ball was over their head. So she came up a little bit early, but the placement just didn't have enough on it. Better movement then from the Thunderbirds. The drive from Tip of Dwan just distracts from the hold Austin was offering. So they're getting the formula right, chipping away the visitors. Parton. Price uncontested. There's the drive from the skipper. Dwyer demanding the ball. Just outside the power five period. Well, they warm their hands long. Petty. Captain for the Thunderbirts throwing herself into a work. Bit more eager now in defense. Yes, they've started to lift a little bit. They seem like they're a bit more attacking at the ball, wider on their feet, not so stagnant. Nice shot from Dwyer. Of course, the problem now for the Thunderbirds is playing catch-up against the team that has two hot hands in the Power 5 period. It's hard to defend because you just don't know who to stop because they're both so dominant. And at the other end, Tipper Dwan, really the only one of three that will go long. Here's another opportunity for the Giants as they sweep down court. That's the signal for the Power 5 period. Something that will not face these two shooters. They are double trouble. And they're likely to cost Suncorp a lot of money in that period. And we <laughs> hope they court, do. Though. We hope they do. That's one just for one. Harvey Norman replay showing just how easy it was for the Giants as 
An HCF tactical timeout is called by Julie Fitzgerald. We're getting a little bit one out down here. We need a lot more movement before we take the ball, all right? We're a little bit stagnant. Stop and run, stop and run. We need a little bit movement before we take the ball, all right? I'd really not... I'd really not like to drag her out quite so early, quite so soon. So if you can get some more movement happening down there, we can open things up a little bit. Be careful of the really long swings. Do the work so they can have quick ball movement, not quite such long swings, OK? And you broaden your vision a little bit so that you can see everyone, all right? You've won the 10, all right? So we don't have to force anything here. We'll do what's comfortable, OK? Make sure in the long run we've got someone belting towards it. No, point belting towards that long pass, because that's a really good outlet for us. Remember, they've only got one two-point shooter. We will fake and we'll set up there, fake it, we'll fake the one. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 Here we go. Giants on three. One, two, three, Giants. HCF tactical timeout. Giants return for really just a reminder, a point that they have structured within their game plan to address did we win the 10? Yes. How are we going to play the five? Absolutely. And they know what they're coming up against with their opponents. They said they've only got one two point or Suncorp super shooter in Dwan. We shut down the down that but we've at least got options and we just play what's comfortable as they said they've got they're in control of this game always a feature of the giants huddle is the work of a general that part plays that role of harnessing the troops before they come back out and she's got a great position in goal shooters she can obviously see the defensive structures she can definitely take that time oh she swings it back in brownley there to pick up this the scraps Again, free space for the Giants. Very little pressure put on them in attack. Pretty well running the race as they'd like. They look very much in control, very composed. Sterling has been put out of play a lot. She looks a little bit confused as to what she's being called for. I think in previous weeks, she's maybe got away with it. So Kate Wright today, she might need some clarification at half time as Dwan keeps in the ball in play. We'll get down court side to Sam Pullman. Any movement on the bench that you can see? Any forecast for us, Sam? Interesting in that timeout. Tanya spent a lot of time with the attackers demanding more, saying we need to do basics. We need 10 to 15% better. But for me, interesting, she wasn't looking one bit at Pop Gita. She's been sit sitting with her warm-up top on the entire time. And for me, not a player engaged, ready to take the court. So interesting that Tanya's sticking to this lineup, given that it's only an eight goal uh, attacking effort from them again. So for me, it's not a player that's going to enter the game in this half. Well, the good news is that Tip the Dwong is starting to warm up that long range arm. Beautiful shot from her moments ago. 30 plays 15, three minutes out from half time. The visitors with it all ahead of them. Lucy Austin swings for support through Taylor Williams. That'll be for one. Giants defense knowing exactly where that score power is going to come from and shutting it down so they can only chip away at that one goal on the board. They're well organized, the Giants unit. Round 12, Price holds it up. Good touch from Sterling, clean around the body. Force of throw in. Speak about teams, Annie, you know, creating that energy and creating that vibe. It just seems the Giants, even when loose balls are going astray, they're always first to grab onto it. Thunderbirds, when they're having little tips, aren't backing each other up. They really need to generate a little bit of extra spice into their game today. Giants well aware how important this match is for them. They sit outside the top four. And so far, it's been a commanding performance from them. Plenty of netball left in this one. At the top to Austin. Now they're looking for super shot zone. Lucy Austin. Denied. And into the hands, you guessed it, Jamie Lee Price. Full flight down court. She's been good. Good jump from Sterling. That one clean. Time to perfection. Denies the long range shot. Sophie Dwyer. But when you're winning a game, all those little things fall your way. They're just not falling the way of the Thunderbirds. 
So it's really hard for them to bring this deficit back when the Giants are moving with such confidence. Using the full three seconds, Sophie Dwyer. Radar hasn't faltered. Center to follow. Giants putting the foot down, punishing, going into half time. No rush for the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Plenty of time to get it down court and work for super shot range. They'll need Dwan in position. The work of Parmenta and Price out the front is really kind of stifling. Oh, as they see, they get little tips. Stifling the attack of the Thunderbirds. Dwan's having to do a lot out, of, out the front, so she's not in that Suncorp super shot zone. Again, trying to work the ball around, and as you say, Maddie, stifling defense from the Giants. The unit work on a string, well connected. And that will give some relief, exactly what they wanted. Two point shot. Oh, and Tepper Dwan doesn't disappoint. The second of the match, right on the buzzer for half time. So a little flurry from the visitors to end the first half. That will please them. Can they take that momentum? into the sheds and back out in the second half of this game. The Giants, though, taking the first quarter 18-7, the second 14-9, are in a commanding position. They lead the Adelaide Thunderbirds 32-18. to So the Giants looking composed, in control, not a worry in the world. 30 minutes of netball still to play. Welcome back, it's First Nations round and we're wrapping it up here in Sydney at Kent Rosewall Arena. Giants hosting the Adelaide Thunderbirds, both coming to this match so aware there is a log jam on the competition ladder like no other, never in the history of Suncorp Supernatural has it been so packed, so many teams in contention. We'll get straight down courtside to Tanya Ops, coach of the Adelaide Thunderbirds. And Tanya, you're trailing on the scoreboard, but we just finished saying half a game can be a lifetime in netball. Yeah, it can. And, um, you know, we're uh, obviously not too happy with the way we've started the game. So we'll be really looking to um, put out a much better performance in that um, in the second half. Tanya, um, Poggina and Petty obviously started off the bench, but we haven't seen Poggina inject. You're sticking with Austin. Will we see that change up or are you going to stick with the youngster for the rest of the game? Well, I think we'll just see how it unfolds over the next probably 10 minutes. Um, and, you know, like, we've had a fairly disrupted week of training and, um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see we'll see how that unfolds, I think. Tanya, we can tell you've got a lot on your mind. We'll let you go and get back into the business of coaching and possibly winning. Good Cheers. luck. Thanks, Annie. Underway in this third quarter. We need to remind our viewers, five teams on the Suncorp Super Ladder are locked on 20 points. So it is about winning... Maddie Brown, but it's about winning well and banking those goals, banking those points for percentages. Because at the moment, we see teams sitting on the same amount of percentage, same amount of points. So, you know, these goals that you're going to have scored against you, if you can bring this out to Giants today, they can bring it to a win, but also a really good win. They push themselves up just that little bit further, higher, and can secure a third position, really, which well, is a home final. Yeah, so let's just look at these points on the ladder. The Firebirds on 20, the Thunderbirds on 20, but each of them 100.9%, 100.2. Drop down to the Giants sitting below them, 99%. The Swiss and the Magpies are 96.7%. You can't even bust open the percentages. No, no you can't. <laughs> well, let's see what the Adelaide Thunderbirds can do. It's been all Giants so far. Missed the opportunity to Austin, then almost needed a release from the air and vision. Body and shoulders around a circle. But you can see Dwan getting into that circle nice and early, being a threat closer to the post. We saw her do a wealth of work out the front, but she was shooting at 100%. They need her in the circle to contribute on that scoreboard. Harton draws Sterling into an obstruction. She's such a campaigner, Joe Harton. And she has their measure so far today. And a smile on the face. Don't normally see that mid-match. No, looking comfortable. Parmenta oh. hits the deck hard. 
Well, yesterday it was Maddie Proud doing a reverse <laughs> roll, wasn't it? And yeah, then, well, she did a backward somersault. Yeah, and then saluting the judges. That was equally impressive. Have another look at this on the Harvey Norman replay. Oh. It's friendly fire Tilly McDonald back to pick up the pieces of Amy Parmenta, who takes it in a stride, having a fine game. Ada Dwyer, Jamie Lee Price, so many times has been uncontested on the drive to Super League. She has. She is dominating that centre position. She's just controlling it and linking. We've seen some quiet performances from Jamie Lee Price over the last couple of weeks, so it's great to see her start to stamp her authority coming into this crunch end of the season. Thunderbirds last week were as much as 16 goals ahead, but it was reined in by their opponents. They need to take a leaf out of that book and a belief that chipping away will be so good and they've got to really attack and place Tip of Dwan in position for the, the super shots. Absolutely. We saw, oh, and, and this is where it's going to start. Their defense need to generate those extra scoring opportunities through gained possession. But they need to win the, this 10 minutes so they give themselves a chance in the power five to get back in this game. Build the pressure from the back, roll it from the back. We just need to talk Shamira Sterling into that plot and then we're in business. Wilson's starting to drive far stronger. Free ball as Tilly McDonald falls off the back line. I think one to the eye. Well, when you dish it out, you've got to expect it back, whether it's from <laughs> your teammate or another opponent. She's a tough cookie, though. Thunderbirds lead the quarter 5 3, so they've addressed things in that half time huddle. And another through the hands of Austin. Finding Lucy Austin a lot better than they were in the, in the first half with confidence. And the body language is starting to shift. You saw then Austin talking to the troops down court. Sterling, she needs to come to the party. Space is freed by Harton. Looking for the deception. She wanted to offload that to Dwyer, but Dwyer not in position. Dwyer, though, with the fast hands. And that was pretty from the hosts, and the skipper likes it. Yeah, Harvey Norman replay, really quick hands, and they use them for the triangle. Giants are so good to let the ball speed do the talking. Oh, that falls, falls the Thunderbirds way, a little tip there. That's the, that's the type of luck they need just to keep them in this, this game. Price with the centre for the Giants. Maddie Hay off the line. Oh, there's a piece from Sterling. The touch first from Wilson. The support play from Sterling. Thunderbirds having a better go at in the in this third quarter. Long ball to Williams. All of a sudden, this support play all the way down, and a sense of urgency from the Adelaide Thunderbirds, and far better connection to Lucy Austin. And it's coming from their multiple options. They were very one-dimensional dimensional in that first half, but having multiple options to keep the Giants defence guessing. Thunderbirds in possession. Ten now the difference. Easily made up in Suncorp Super Netball. And the crowd starting to get behind the Giants. They can sense the shift in momentum as the Thunderbirds find Austin. She finds Ned. Do we get a timeout soon from Julie Fitzgerald? Because the Thunderbirds are back in business. Long ball to Hay. Cross court they go. Screen is being set up by Dwyer, but they use the backspace instead. That's a settler. Double playing this side of the court. The Thunderbirds overloading from the center pass. Just changing up their structures. Contact goes against Tilly McDonald. I've just been watching that little battle between those two. Austin really needs to get the feet moving again. Lock and unlock that held position, not just stay in one spot. Absolutely, and when she does that, the feeders can cite that space and deliver with confidence early rather than having to play it around and not look into her. Like, you need a threat, threat there and give it to her when she's on. Just looking at the Mr. Net Points match leaders, Jamie Lee Price. Well, we've talked her up all game. She's on 85. Sterling continuing to have an impact, but will she have more at the back end? They need it from her. I'm just laughing, listening to us. Me saying what a shooter should do and you knowing how to give it to her. <laughs> they need to stop us. Back play. Poorly placed. 
and telegraphed and it puts the skipper out of play for the Thunderbirds. Air out of a balloon. Good composure in the middle. No rush from the Giants. Have to play it around. Look at the defensive pressure now across the line for the Thunderbirds. Yeah, and you know what? The goal attack and wing attack flooding down. They're setting up this zone where they've got the two out the front, the two sweeping out the back. But a lot of that pressure's going to start come from the goal attack and wing attack with really strong hands over. Well, heartbreaking after all that work and the organisation and the flooding defence, the great deception, Dwyer to heart. Break your heart if you're an opposing side. Nice snatch from the skipper, hauls it in with that strong left arm, opens up the space. Joe so Hart is screening the shot. Still an obstruction call, we'll see Sterling stand out. Easy as from Sophie Dwyer, had a fine game so far. McDonald strong off the line. Thunderbirds doing that early work rather than having every single pass contested with the Giants player hammering on their body. They're actually doing a little bit of early prep work, which is allowing their, their balls, balls to go a bit more freer within, within those spaces with confidence, as we've mentioned. It's interesting because the Giants have had a tough road trip to Perth and back. The Thunderbirds are playing a little like a team that's fatigued from travel and now starting to warm up. Absolutely. Giants have weathered the storm of the T-Birds. <laughs> oh, sorry, Maddie. Just laughing at Joe Hart. She is the orchestra leader down that end. The big fake shifted the defender, swung the ball. She's playing with them. Well read by Parmenta. They gave it too much air. Kamikaze move when you've got Amy Parmenta and April Brantley hunting at the back. And the crowd loved it. Uncontested, through court they go. Strength on that ball from Dwyer. Open to the post is hard and listen to the crowd. Beautiful glimpse there on the Harvey Norman replay of the work of Amy Palmenta. Sterling thinks about it. Has enough speed and a double shot to get back on the high ball. That's good work. That's the touch you asked for, Maddie Brown. Absolutely. She hedged, obviously, the pass. Put Jamie Price, Jamie Lee Price, under the pump a little bit, and that ball obviously fell short. She's got to put that deception and that confusion in those centre quarters' heads to try and get some ball back. Juan takes the Thunderbirds to 11 for the quarter. They lead the quarter. Sam Pullman, they're starting to tick along. They are. I was just about to say that, Annie, that this is a much better quarter from the Adelaide Thunderbirds. They are leading this by one goal. For me, watching, though, it seems like it's such still such hard work for the Adelaide Thunderbirds. There are a few key players, understandably, on court that do look tired. Hannah Petty is certainly, you know, sucking in the air, coming back after being off last week. But then you look at her matchup, Maddie Hay. Taylor Williams comes up with the intercept. Incredible. They just need to value it, shorten it up, make sure they're decision making is right because at the moment from both teams they're playing a bit of tennis the ball's going back and forth we're into the power five anything can happen Wong has a hot hand from super sod range doesn't fire then we have to remember that i guess to the three players missing last week from the thunderbirds roster were off the back of influenza so you would expect there is a fatigue factor heavily hitting them absolutely you know petty nakabel and even pocket were all out Youngsters stood up, but we haven't seen them injected into the game just yet. Well, Thunderbirds lead the quarter 12-9, and Julie Fitzgerald is aware of it. She and sees the ship. She's scored an HCF timer. Let's make sure we have confidence in each other. We know that we'll come front all the time down here. Oh, my God. 
Fitzgerald really just reframing things, but there was a sense of urgency and a dictation coming from Joe Hart, aware that in any other format of the game, 10 goals might do it, not in Suncorp Super Netball. You cannot rest on what may have already ha unfolded in the game. You need to continue to work hard, as she said. It's bloody hard work. It's going to be hard in defence and hard in attack. And, they've, and, and Thunderbirds can bring this deficit back, so they've got to be mindful to keep them at bay. That was a chance to bring it back to nine. And the contact call goes against Adelaide Thunderbirds. Giants in possession. Sam, any updates from the sideline? I listened into the huddle with Tanya Ops and spent a lot of time with her goal attack and, and wing attack in Tipper and McDonald again, talking about getting that depth one punching through and then spoke a little bit about the shot choice. So I think that's the difference between uh, two teams in terms of that experience of shooters knowing when, you know, the likes of Joe Harton has that game sense when to shoot, when to pass off, when to sink a two versus the bench screaming at Austin to, to shoot that last goal. So. They're still in this game. They just need to make sure there's still options and punching through an attack. Thanks, Sam. Um, I guess when you're playing the Giants, you know one thing, they are going to shoot. There is no fear factor in those two about going to post. No, where Thunderbirds still looking to chip away at those one pointers. But we've seen their defense get a little bit more hand on ball and hopefully that will create, as we see that nice long pass in the Harvey Norman replay from Dwan to Austin. Look in, but they're going to have to start. Don't leave it to the fourth quarter of these two-point shots. You've got to start putting the pressure on oh, now. Great work from Wilson front position, but just enough for Joe Harton to get a handle. The Giants still in control, but you just get the sense that Thunderbirds are coming at them and they can't relax. McDonald. Back plays to Petty. Where's the connection? Oh, it's well read by Amy Palmetta again. Telegraphed by the skipper. Lucy Austin obviously came out of the circle, but she actually caused a little bit too much congestion there, so that the defenders knew exactly where all the Thunderbirds players were. Almost an intercept from Jamie Lee Price from her own player. Keep the ball alive. Finished by Harden. Giants take it to 43. They trail the quarter, but they're still in control of this round 12 match. Just a little more frustrated than they were at the start of the game. Throws that strong left hand from Harton. Oh, good touch, jostling. Under two minutes until three quarter time. Joe Harton. English international takes the Giants to 44. Plenty of time for the Thunderbirds, though, to chisel into this margin. Good stretch from Wilson. A little pop back from Tippett Wong. Just changes up the timing in the forward line. Yes, that's better from Taylor Williams. Have that top option from the centre quarter. Now they're looking for two-point zone and for Tippett Juan. Well, Austin, is she going to go? <laughs> she thought about it, but it was a quick, she needed a quick release off to Dwan. And you talked about this, the experience of shooters knowing when to force it, when to go to post. Yeah, and even the, the experience of the Giants defense right now, they know exactly where that, that Suncorp super shot's going to come from, so they're shutting it down and only allowing T-Birds that one goal option. Wilson has a piece that collects body. So the timing's still out in that defensive unit. It is. They're, they're allow, allowing a lot of contested down this end when they revert down to the other end of the court. Kate Wright has been a lot for um, picking them up, so they kind of need to make the most of having a little bit more free reign down here. We'll see if there's a scoring end. Final quarter still to come out of the left hand of Sophie Dwyer. And again, the physicality of the Adelaide Thunderbird defence. That was a holding call. So they're in dangerous territory, the Thunderbirds defenders. That's a great strong take under the post from Sterling. Sense of urgency evident. Seconds ticking down. Time enough to get it down and score. Every one counts. But the Giants 
secure. They know how to shut it down. And that will be it, the end of the third quarter. So the Giants, 44. Thunderbirds 33, Giants in the box seat. We're 15 minutes away from clarifying the top of the table jigsaw puzzle. More pieces about to fall into place when we return on Fox Netball. It's Giants up against Adelaide Thunderbirds when we return. And Sean in order, we see you. Don't forget Pivot Show coming up straight after this. Hannah Hollis driving that. Do a full wrap of round 12, Suncorp Super Netball. Quarter time score brought to you by Origin and it's Giants 44, Thunderbirds 33. We're not done yet, Maddie Brown. Thunderbirds won that third quarter 15 12. They've got it all ahead of them, but so much at stake as they get us underway and they don't like the opening call of the quarter. The Giants fans do. Just a reminder so much at stake on this result. Thunderbirds have never made it to the finals. They need this match to stay in contention and keep alive that hope. The Giants, well, they'd love to be in the finals again. Twice minor premiers, twice grand finalists, never champions, Maddie Brown. No, they've come close. Is this their year where they've got all of the types of tools up there tri and tricks that they need to get, go that little bit extra? We heard Joe Hart last year say, watch us, we will come back. We want to go one better. Well, they're keeping alive their hopes. Sam Pullman, what do you think? Is this a read for the finals? For me, they are cool, calm and collected giants. You can see the experience that they have for finals. Amy Parmenta and Sophie Dwyer had played in finals before last year. So while they didn't make it, you know, go all the way in terms of winning the grand final, that experience will certainly play in their hand coming into this game. I listened in their quarter break and it was all really positive and constructive in terms of where to go here. Have a look at the attack end. It'll be all about using the triangles and finding the top of the middle to open up the defense end and defensively still have a fly, but keep that real high hand so that you build the pressure. Thanks, Sam. Great insights for us. Thunderbirds with turnover ball. McDonald playing catch up down court. At the top to Austin, just turns Tilly McDonald in the air. Thunderbirds have been really good on converting their game possession. What's letting them down is they're only scoring off 51% of their centre passes. So they need to clean this up one now and make another scoring opportunity count. You're getting the ball every second time on your centre pass. You've got to utilise it so when you get those game balls as well, you can continue to stay in this contest. We're so used to seeing them dominate in turnover ball and possession offered by the defenders. That's probably been something that's been disappointing at the start of this game, although they're warming to their task. But running 50% or goal from goal won't do it when you're in chase position. Parmenta. Price. Oh, nice ball and hauled in. She went up a little bit early, or did she think up quite enough? Yes. But still has the ability and the strength to own it. Maddie Hay with a good read. Up goes that left arm of Joe Harton. Tip it one. They need her in the circle. They need some options again. Interesting holding call, grabbing onto a skirt, sighted by. Well, if, you, if you can't get up there, you might as well keep it down with you, Annie. <laughs> They've got eyes everywhere, the umpires. Price goes through the back door. A few Giants players won't have done their, themselves any harm. Stace Morankovic watching every game with a keen eye. Pocketbook ready. Notes galore. Well, Wilson thought about it and then thought, no. No, <laughs> not worth no, it. Not worth it. Not what you want to see from your defender when you're fighting for your life. Good quick ball from Taylor Williams and a lovely drive from Dwan. That's a nice passage from the visitors. And the completion from Lucy Austin. So again, they're in the race, goal for goal in this final quarter. They need to find more. Easy. 
fear them to lose this game. It's so unpredictable across the next two rounds of who will be who. You need to make sure that even in a loss, you are scoring well. Absolutely. As we see Shamira Sterling come up with another intercept. Might have been thrown to her, but she's still got her hands on to it, Addy. <laughs> that won't be how she writes the story. No. <laughs> she is the barometer for the Thunderbirds, though. When she's on song, they start to hum. Mini charge here from the visitors. Sense of urgency, starting to warm to the task. Outclass the first two quarters, back in the business in the third quarter. Until that point, they were mounting a combat. Great work from the experienced campaigner, former Diamond, April Brandy, knowing just when to nullify an attack. And that's probably that experience that Sam Pullman, oh, I hope we don't get to handle a ball, but the experience with the Giants, now that they've had a year of playing under pressure, compared to the Adelaide Thunderbirds, we've never seen them in finals. They're unsure of what the, maybe those clutch moments and that game sense of knowing, all right, we need to make that one count. The touch from Wilson. Still a sense of complacency. You know, there was the touch that forced the throwing, but a leisurely stroll back to set up, not that run-in set up be antagonistic, disguise space, not quite there from them. No, and I guess it's hard when you've been in chase mode from the very first whistle. Giants have come out from the start, dominated. You've been, been in complete control. They've just been in chase mode, the Thunderbirds, the entire game. Giants in possession, good timing from Tippett Dwan. Double, triple jump over the shot, so the offload goes to Austin. Thunderbirds continue to dominate in this final quarter. The scoreline now down to eight, the difference. All of a sudden, the complexion of this game has changed, getting awfully interesting, Maddie Brown. It is, and you can see in those missed net points, Sterling sitting at the top on 101. She's had her eight games, so she's started to develop as the game has gone on. It's just not converting on the scoreboard for the Adelaide Thunderbirds, but that Midcourt, I mentioned them at the start, that midcourt, Hay, Parmenta and Price have been so solid for the Giants. Error rate very low from the Giants, but they won't be comfortable with this scoreline. Bit of a buffer, Sophie Dwyer takes the Giants to 49. And now there is a spring in the step of the visitors. Arms up in the air, talk to each other, communication. They're finding Austin quite comfortably. And the gap back to just the eight. And that is absolutely doable in Suncorp Super Netball. Game on our hands here in Sydney. Just a reminder, Thunderbirds ahead of the Giants on the ladder with a turnover ball, Matty Brown. Is this a moment? This is a clutch moment for the Adelaide Thunderbirds. You need to go down here and convert. Oh, it's a slow bomb. Long and slow. And the shot doesn't reward it. Touch though, Williams. Five intercepts two matches ago, three intercepts last week. Back-to-back -back MVP. She's starting to come to life at the back end of this game when the pressure's on. Offside call. It's an offside call against Sophie Dwyer. I think we're fine. Over the top to Austin G. There's some range and some space behind Tilly McDonald now. And it's the work from Dwan out the front, being a little bit more creative, giving it going, drawing Brantley out of the circle and isolating that one-on-one -on -one with Austin and McDonald in closer to the post. Seven the difference. Looking for Austin. She's been the go-to in this final quarter. Still don't feel like they've hit top speed, but boy, they're gathering momentum, the Adelaide Thunderbirds. As we get down to Sam Pullman, it's a six goal game. Sam Pullman, how are your nerves? How good <laughs> is this? You can hear the crowd all on edge of their seats, and so they should be because the Adelaide Thunderbirds have come back into this match. They're leading this quarter. So if we talk about this lab half, as Penna Petty comes up, tries to come up with the intercept, but this change is exactly what they need. For me, Giants have just kind of stopped 
stop doing all the good things that they did in that first half. And, you know, the Adelaide Thunderbirds from the last two weeks, I feel like they're back here. They're finding their groove. They're finding Austin nicely. And their confidence in letting that ball go, they're doing the work. Well, they've been slow to come to the party, but they're certainly in the business at the moment. The Adelaide Thunderbirds, Manny Brown, Julie Fitzgerald's on her feet. They had a solid margin, now eroded to six goals the difference. If they get away with this win, how disenchanting is it for Julie Fitzgerald to watch the back end of this game knowing she's got finals or hoping she's got finals coming? Well, you, you just can't expect to go into a final series if, if your team can get there only winning a game from two quarters. You want consistency throughout the game. And to start as strong is great, but you want to be able to power home. So they need to start. They talk about winning that 10 minutes. They are going to win it, but they need to come home strong. And that one put a smile on the face of Julie Fitzgerald. A great ball from Jamie Lee Price to the skipper to take the Giants to 50 and to celebrate the half century. The Giants have called an HCF tactical timeout. Oh, we waited for something to open. Gerald Maddie Brown talking about you've reverted to bad habits. What you referring to? She was talking about they were starting to look for intercepts and, and not doing the grind, the hard one-on-one -on -one pressure. They were allowing the Thunderbirds way too much space to move into. As we oh, see, that's... Amy Parmenta, that's the grind she was asking for. Front position and then attack it. Absolutely stunning oh. live and the reply comes from Wilson. We've got just over five minutes remaining in this match. The Adelaide Thunderbirds have suddenly decided they want to be in the business of winning. They've turned off the alarm clock. They're in business. Six the difference. Largest lead of this game was 16. And we made reference to it earlier in the game. The Thunderbirds had that lead recently, saw it fitted away. This time they know how to be the hunter and they're back in chase and chasing well. Danger signs for the Thunderbirds is the prowess that the Giants display in the Power Five. We've just hit that period. Just under five remaining in this match. We think it's anybody's. Austin doesn't back herself from two. Kept alive by Wilson. Almost a clumsy approach from the Thunderbirds. They go for the one. Chisel away. The visitors in chase position. Oh, Harvey of a repay. Taylor Williams kept it in one-handed. And the flow not there now for the Giants. The defensive pressure as a unit has been upped by the Thunderbirds. But they need turnover ball. Who will produce it? Sterling, Wilson. Nice screen and turn from Sophie Dwyer. Post position commanded by Joe Hart. Timing too good for Wilson. The crowd realizes this is a danger period for the Giants. That will help their cause. Ken Rose and Lorena riding on the backs of their Giants. And of course, this playing into the hands of the Giants, the recalling to set the penalty, eating up time. Exactly what the Giants would want. 
Oh, close to a held ball, forced by some hedging from the Thunderbirds, but what a ball right on three. Finds the skipper, she finds net. The Giants take it to 53. A hard read, the face of Joe Hart. Out deep, trying to help. Open for Dwyer, touch from Wilson. Have the Thunderbirds got another surge? They need to surge now. They need to get some handle ball and try and get it down nice and quickly. Giants very patient and happy to work it around, as you said, to just dwindle that clock away. Yeah, they've up the ante, but they need another gear, the Thunderbirds. They're running out of time. And the Giants playing smart netball. They're not forcing the twos. They're playing the close-range shots. Remembering that Suncorp Super Netball shots score two and $100 in the bank for Conflict Girls Foundation. Good pressure from Dwyer. No easy road for the Thunderbirds. All hands on decks required. They're down by nine. They'll need to go super shots. Maddie Brown's in the game. She's left commentary position. She's still got some speed. Girl, you can move. <laughs> Gotta do the ball girl as well. Well, you didn't put into the feeders, into the shooters. That's what they wanted. Oh, oh what a shot! Lucy Austin responds right at a time when the Thunderbirds need something extra. Don't forget, every successful Suncorp super shot today, Suncorp will donate $100 to the Comforter Girls Foundation. All of that going to such a great cause, keeping girls in the game. Well, they've rallied, but the clock likely to beat the visitors. And there's the maturity and the experience from Giants Netball, knowing how to work this last two minutes. Price to Harton. They've been solid for the Giants. They've weathered some storms from the Adelaide Thunderbirds, but it's been too little too late for the visitors. Where has this game, this game from there been the entire time? Austin, Austin again, Austin. though! Doesn't know She's how to done. die. Lucy Austin has grown in leaps and bads, absorbed the pressure. She's taking the super shots, keeping their hopes alive. Giants will know how to play down the clock. Remember when they played these two in round two, Thunderbirds had it all their own way. The Giants stayed in the business for the first half. They were decimated by illness. They've turned the tables round 12 and have had the experience and the composure. They hung on to a lead when the Thunderbirds decided, switch on, we've come to play. Yes. Oh, they're, try they're trying to find an answer, the Adelaide Thunderbirds. But the Giants just happy to let the ball go around. We're just remembering the Thunderbirds sit inside the four. The Giants are in fifth outside. So this is a crucial result for Giants netball. Touch there outside. from Petty. But all it's doing is chiseling away and eating up time. That won't play into the hands of the Thunderbirds. Just over a minute. There's the finish from Sophie Dwyer. She's been solid, 27 with 31. Looking for Austin. She can't handle a little touch from Tilly McDonald. She was trying to stay in that <laughs> sun court super shot area and it bubbled through her hands out the back. There's an attempt from Williams. Price looking long to Hay, time enough. This for two from Hart and from the hands of the skipper drops it short. The crumbs picked up by Sophie Dwyer. The crowd love it. Oh, they're getting greedy. She's eager. The Giants. Super shot chance. Yes. And Joe Harden, Harden comes finishes the, the game as she started for the Giants. She's led by example. Giants know just how important it is to mass totals and push out their percentages. They're on 59. Lucy Austin. Oh, whatever you what can do, I can do better. And it's a loss, but that is a valiant comeback from the visitors, the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Plus, they put the foot down and pushed Maddie Brown to score and score volume, knowing percentages count. Disappointing to have a loss when you've only come and played for half a game of netball. They were very disappointing in that opening first quarter and 18 for the Giants. 
Only seven attempts there for the Thunderbirds. But you're right, percentage is going to count. So to get back into this game and only lose by nine, disappointing, but it's the only positive that they can probably take away from it. And the fact that they started to build a little bit of momentum and fought hard. Well, they looked from the get-go like their hearts weren't in it, and slowly they warmed to the task. Lost the first quarter 18-7, lost the second quarter 14-11, and then they came to play. They won the third 15-12, they won the final quarter 17-15, they ran it in like a train, but to be fair, the Giants netball, very, very good round 12, knew the importance and banked on their experience, brought their A game. They did, and as I mentioned, they weathered some of those Thunderbird storms when they surged back, but it was the standing up of Joe Hutton, Jamie Lee Price, as you said, those experienced campaigners that came through solid for the Giants in the end.